I'm running businesses doing millions of pounds worth of revenue. But what if I lost it all? What would be my next steps? Well, this here is my step-by-step -step strategy plan for building businesses from zero to one million of revenue and how to do it in quite a short period of time. Now, there are some rules to the business plan that we're building here. We're going to make sure that we're bootstrapped. We're going to be frugal with our cash because we're going to use all of our own money. There'll be no investors, no loans. It's all our own revenue generation. There's going to be a timeline to the challenge as well. We're going to do all of this, build a million pound revenue business in just 12 months time. And we're going to use real products. There's going to be no software as a service or no snazzy app. We're actually going to have something we can touch and fill for our customers to see and receive an actual physical product. So now we need some startup cash to get our business going. So welcome to the gig economy. Now this is what I did. You know, I started out as a DJ, as a kid's entertainer, as a magician. So I was swapping time for money, but I was swapping good money for my time. And this allowed me to build up some savings, some cash flow to really build a proper business that wasn't just swapping time for money. So I really think for this plan to work, we need to try and get 10,000 pounds in the bank. This is gonna be our seed capital, our starting fund to put money in to manufacture a product that we can sell. We want to be doing it at that £10,000 level because we need a certain amount of scale to either get wholesale prices or even better still, manufacturing prices. Don't worry, I'm going to explain all this as we go through the video. So we've got our £10,000 in the bank. We now need a brilliant business idea that we can turn into a commercially profitable enterprise. What is a commercially profitable enterprise? Well, it's a business that has margin. Your product has margin. You want to make sure you've also got scalability. There's enough people People, millions of people that want to buy your product or service. Also, we want to have brand value. We don't want to be selling ice cubes, buying it in for a pound and selling it for £1.20 in a highly commoditized market. We want to buy into something that has brand value and our customers want to pay a margin because they believe in the brand. And lastly, we want to make sure that it has exit value. So we're putting all of our time, effort and energy because we always should be building a business to sell even if we have no intention of selling it. Now, businesses that get good value at sale price is one Ones that have love, want and need. People love the product that you provide, they want the product that you provide, and they also need the product that you provide. A good example of this is childcare or schools. People love their children to be educated, they want them to be educated, and they need them to be educated, and they will continue to pay for that service even in times of economic downturns. So we want to keep that little love, want and need at the top of our head when we're coming up with our brilliant business idea. So my idea for building this £1 million business is stationary. Why? Because of all the things I just spoke about. It's got love, want and need. Kids are going to school, they're never going to stop going to school, it's recession proof. There's millions of kids, so there's scale, there's population that want to buy my thing. And I'm going to build a brand so that I get that brand value to get my margins. And if I build this into a million pound plus, which I believe I will, it'll have huge exit value. How do we do it? How is a very big word, isn't it? There's really two options in building this business. We could go for the low barrier to entry easy option or a profitable higher barrier to entry option. I want to give you some working examples and with those working examples, tell you what most entrepreneurs do and what the few profitable ones do. Example number one, the low barrier to entry option, is you could go and buy a load of stationary wholesale and sell it on. Maybe you put some personalization on it, which might give you a little bit of a USP. But what's far better is you create your own products that are just yours, so you're building your own brand and no one else can sell it, thus creating a one-to-one -one marketplace that gives you real prominence. But how do we do that? How do we manufacture our own products? Where do we find manufacturers? In many cases, that won't be done in the Western economies. That's gonna be done in the Eastern economies like India, Turkey, China. China, you're going to have to source people to manufacture your own product. How do we do that? Well, you might have to go to some trade shows, or you might have to find an agent in each country that's going to do all the legwork for you, or even get on a plane. That's what I did, and I actually went to those countries. But there's also other sites like Alibaba that are hugely resourceful if you want to manufacture in other countries. We're about a month in now to our startup business. Sadly, our revenue's on zero. We've got to change that pretty quickly. We now move into the test and measure stage. This is what all brilliant entrepreneurs do. This is where they create sales 
before actually spending any money on product. That's what I've done time and time again. How do we do that? We create a teaser campaign. So we create visuals of the products that we send to our prospects. We then get pre-orders. This is where people give us money at that stage, knowing that the product's gonna come two or three months down the line. Once we've got the product, we send them some samples, and then we get more orders and more orders, and then it's just brilliant, we're off to the races. It takes about 90 days to manufacture all of our products. So we're now three to four months into the journey. And because of all of our pre-orders, we're now on about 100,000 pounds worth of revenue. That's what I did when I've started other companies. So I know this can be done too. Sales, that's now where we need to be spending at least 80% of our time. Now, crucially, because we're bootstrapped, I want to use network marketing, specifically PTAs. Now, this is Parents Teachers Association. Secondary schools and schools have these associations, and their job is to raise money for their school. And I want to help them to do that. I want them to sell my products in lunch breaks, after school, where parents come and collect the kids, see all the products, and they get a cut of the sales, and then I get the rest of the money. Now, I want to de-risk this for them because I want to be able to offer sale a return. I say, look, I'll give you a thousand pounds worth of product. You've got seven days to sell it. And then you pay me once you've sold it and whatever you don't sell, I'll come and collect from you. If you don't sell anything, ask the manana. So it completely de-risks it for them, but it gives me all these multiple selling opportunities. I get some really good PR because the school can make some money if they sell the stuff. And I don't have any expensive leases and shops and it's just brilliant. So option one was doing all that pre-sale, selling to garden centers, selling to retailers, selling to zoos and visitor attractions. Now I'm doing localized selling to schools through network marketing. So I've got two bites of the cherry. Back to our timeline. We're now five to six months into the journey. And revenues now should be 300K. We've got some of that wholesale, retail, zoos, visitor attractions, buying product from us. Plus we're doing all of our network marketing, selling at schools as well. Next, we wanna now build a website. And I think it's really important that we notice we built a 300,000 pound revenue business with zero website. We knocked on doors, we picked up the phone and we sent letters in the post. We done some good old fashioned network marketing to build our 300,000 pounds worth of revenue business. It's what I've done in all my businesses. Most people worry about business cards and brochures and brand. No, you actually put the effort in. Once you've got some revenue in, now we build a website that allows us to get direct sales. But then we've got to get traffic to our website and that's where content marketing comes in and it should definitely be a part of your play. You should be on TikTok shops, you should have Instagram and you should definitely be making YouTube and being on all the other content marketing channels, pushing people to your website so that you can eventually build data. We'll come on to that in just a moment. Those of you that are regular viewers to my YouTube channel will know that I bought a hotel a few months ago. I'm standing in it right now. A lot of people have been DMing me saying, James, how much does it cost to run a hotel? What's the profitability? Well, the good news is I've made a video just about that. It's not on my YouTube channel. It's on the American Express Amex YouTube channel. Why? Because they've sponsored this video. Now, I'm a massive Amex fan. I use them on my business all the time, and I convert all that spend into points that I can use for really cool stuff. But it goes further than that. The guys at Amex have created this business trends and insights hub for business owners and entrepreneurs to use as a resource so they can swipe and deploy ideas into their business. I'll put a link in the video description for that as well. Now if you want to watch the video there's a link in the video description or you can watch it by just clicking above my head right now. Let's get into it. We're now seven to eight months into the journey we need to push our content marketing even further. So I think we should open a real brick and mortar shop, but not just to get more sales, but to turn that into our studio so that we are constantly making more content like a TV shopping channel. I really think this strategy would work, especially for this demographic and space. Data is mega powerful because it allows you to do ads and you know your return on investment. When you do the ads, you build your list and the list is mega powerful because you can communicate to that to get more sales. It also gives you the information to do joint ventures and work with influencers because you know your return on investment because the data tells you the numbers and the numbers don't lie. By now, you're going to be working incredibly hard and you're going to need some help. So it's time to team build. Now, remember, when you're building a database and you're building teams, you're building your exit value so that you're building a commercially profitable enterprise 
that eventually works without you in it. And that's the golden rule here. And that's why you must build a team. The first member of staff that you should employ is a secretary or PA that takes all them low value tasks away from you so you can focus on the income generating tasks that's gonna drive the profitability into the business. We're now nine to 12 months into our startup business. Revenues should be hitting 750,000 to a million of revenue. And we should be building the business to sell. A business to sell knows it's numbers. It produces monthly management accounts. It tracks its average customer value. It tracks its returning customers. If you know all of this stuff and you put it into a document, someone's going to be wanting to buy your business. Don't forget those magic metrics. Make sure you have margin in your product. Try and go for a times five rule. If you spend a pound on your product, you need to sell it for at least five. Why? You want 20% for your team, 20% for your overhead, 20% for the cost of the product, 20% for your taxes, 20% for your profit. If you do all those things, you're going to build a brilliant business. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.